you know what? I'll go ahead and admit it. I am not a smart person. Hell, I might be the dumbest dumber the ever dumbed. The, the, the fucking mayor of Dumbtown. That's me. The point I'm trying to make here is that I've had Rainbow Six Siege sitting on my hard drive for like months now. And I've never played it until just a couple of days ago. And I know what you're thinking. You haven't played Rainbow Six Siege? That game that lets you fucking imitate that one meme with the FBI guys just fucking coming in and smashing the shit out of someone's house? You know, the one that they announced at E3 2014? Like, t 2014? Like, fucking six years ago? <laughs> Like I said, I'm fucking stupid. I've been sitting on this golden goose egg of a fucking game, and I haven't even touched it until recently, and now I'm in love with it. I can't stop fucking playing it. It's all I think about. Well, that and the opening scene from Lost in Translation where you get to see Scarlett Johansson's ass through the panties. I mean, shit, I think about that a lot too. But now I'm thinking about this almost at the same frequency. And honestly, I'm a big fan of the Rainbow Six franchise in general. I've been playing Rainbow Six since I was in middle school. Hell, I was even in a clan for Rainbow Six Vegas when it came out back in the day. Fucking Kino Room, man. That demo is the shit. I guess you could say I'm a Rainbow Six veteran, because I've just been playing these games for the last 10 years. And that makes it all the stranger that it took me this long to get into Siege. But at the end of the day, that might actually be a good thing. From what I heard, when the game was released at first, it was just plagued with all sorts of bullshit. Bugs, crashes, performance issues. Really, like a budget prostitute, you just didn't want to get so close, you know? If you didn't know what you were going to get when you got into Siege. Luckily, Ubisoft decided to force feed Siege a little bit of penicillin. If you get me, you get me, right? You, you guys have had the clap before, right? Not just me? Rainbow Six Siege, at first announcement back in 2015, it was just, it, it wasn't a good product. It was just very buggy, very shitty, it, it was just hard to play consistently. But after half a decade of fucking improvement, the game is actually pretty goddamn decent now. I mean, as a concept, it's pretty damn solid anyway. Two teams of five, one attacks, one defense plus a completely destructible environment. Add a couple fucking question marks in there. And profit! Every single round in Rainbow Six Siege is a butthole tightening experience that I wholeheartedly recommend to anybody who hasn't fucking played this game yet. And really, coming in as a new player five years later, it's, dude, Honestly, the ass whoopings I had to go through to even get the 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 amount of skill that I have now you, It's it's ass whoopings. Okay, you got to go through ass whoopings to get good at this game five years later But it's worth it. It's fucking great. This game is is very fun The destruction in this game isn't so much like battlefield where it's focused on on big grandiose explosions and whole buildings coming down it's more small scale. It's very, very tactical. And I don't want to say it's realistic because I, I don't really think you could hit a wall with a gun butt and have it actually break and see through it unless you just have really shitty walls. But it's realistic in that every time you spawn in as an attacker or a defender, there's like a palpable sense of just mystery. Like there's no guaranteed lanes that that teams are going to take it's oh it's a very dynamic game it's probably the most dynamic game i've ever played i mean even when you play as a defender i mean traditionally in other games defenders usually just kind of camp in one place and just make sure that their sight lines are clear and whoever pops into a sight line you hose them down right in Rainbow Six Siege, it's not really that easy. Sure, you have an idea of, of the most used sight lines or where uh, the enemy is most likely to be passing by, but that changes on a moment-to-moment -moment basis because of the destructibility of all the environments. But even with that, 
they could have kept all the characters as fucking vanilla wafer fucking Call of Duty create a character cutouts and still had this game be super dynamic and engaging. But not only did they put in this fucking badass system for destructibility and, and just overall tactical play that they have now, but they also put in fucking waifus, bro. I mean, shit, dude. You tell someone to dress tactically, you don't expect them to bring out the fucking dump truck. I mean, god damn! I mean, I know I can only see her eyes, but they're fucking piercing me, man. They're piercing into my soul. She sees through me. And I'm not just saying that because she's using her scanner to literally see right through me. The game comes packed with all sorts of different characters. They call them operators in this game. And each one comes with a specific gadget or special skill that helps give you an edge over other operators' special gadgets and skills. One of my favorites is Fuse because I'm a fucking noob at this game. <laughs> Not only is he rocking that AK-12, a rifle that a lot of people consider to be the best in the game, but he's also got this nifty little gadget that helps him introduce hockey pucks from hell to the enemy team. Just make sure to not use them when you're trying to get a hostage. Those little fuckers will blow up the hostage too. And then, uh, you're not gonna get nice words from your team for that one. I mean, granted, you're not really gonna get nice words from your team most of the time. Uh, newsflash, I've played Rainbow Six Siege now for about 30 hours. Everyone's a fucking dick in this game. Like, everyone is a fucking asshole. And I'm not doing too bad, okay? I, I watch the YouTube videos. I try to keep up with the skills and the and the meta, you know, as, as best as I can as a new player. But, dude, people are fucking jerks in this game, man. They'll tell you to go fuck yourself. They'll vote you out of the game for, like, no reason. You try to talk to them, they'll just fucking start yelling at you. I love it. It's great. It, it, I'm, I'm, I'm still having fun with it. I fucking love that kind of shit. I love talking shit to people online. Hell, some dude sent me a private message with my IP address. I just can't wait for this guy to show up and murder me. I, I'm fucking excited. Look, really, you're just doing yourself a disservice by not playing this game. It's cheap as shit, and it only gets cheaper every other fucking week. It's worth your time, and it's worth the money. Oh, and one last thing. I'm a sucker for when games let you unlock different ways of playing the game as a sense of progression. Like, when you play a car game and you win races and they give you a fucking paint job, fuck that. I don't care about the fucking color of the car, right? But if they give you a new car, then it's like, oh, wow, I got, I got a new car. I wonder how that car drives. This game does something similar in how you unlock the operators. You start off with just one, the uh, recruit, and he, he's not... I don't want to hurt the guy's feelings or anything, but he's a piece of shit. And he fucking sucks, and he should really consider not being a character in this game. But as soon as you start getting some matches in, and you start getting Renown, which is uh, this game's currency, you get the ability to unlock the proper operators. Because this recruit guy is kind of like the newbie, he's the FNG, you know? They, they just have him in there so that as a new player you can play around and just kind of understand how the game works. I'm going to tell you, viewer, Something that I wish someone would have told me when I was trying to get into this game uh, the first time. Uh, playing as the recruit sucks donkey balls. It's not fun. The real fun part of this game is getting the operators and experimenting with them. And that's how this game has kept me playing and it's going to keep me playing for a while. Because I, I bought the cheapest version of the game. I don't have any operators and I've just been slowly but surely getting the renown and buying all the operators and that's the fun part the fun part is getting to see what all these different operators kits bring to the table in terms of, of the gameplay and how you approach situations in the game but yeah that's all I uh, have to say on Rainbow Six Siege as a new player getting into it in 2020 it's fucking good. I mean, there's a barrier for entry for damn sure, but it's worth it. It's a very fun, rewarding game, and I definitely recommend the shit out of it. Well, this is a gaming video in 2020, so I gotta end this on a negative note. Um, how do I shit on Ubisoft? Uh, ha ha! 
Fucking CD Projekt Red's making more money than you guys in, in Europe. <laughs> Suck a dick, Ubisoft. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you didn't enjoy it, fuck you. Click that like button if you did like what you saw. And, uh, you know, comment if you want to tell me something about the video. Whatever your thoughts are. I'm always interested in hearing it. Uh, if you really like the stuff you just saw, then maybe you want to consider subscribing. I mean, it's it's up to you, pal. I'm not going to pressure you into that. Anyway, uh, I had a lot of fun making this video. So hopefully you guys want to see some more Rainbow Six gameplay from me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Fucking... Yeah. Anyway, uh, I appreciate the shit out of you for watching this video, and I, I love you, and I want you to know that. And, uh, yeah, catch you next time.